very uh, good afternoon my dear friends uh, today's eminent resource person dr a shailaja madam garu assistant professor department of botany government uh, degree college autonomous siddipet uh, madam is going to explain one of the important area basics of our uh, uh, botany especially uh, roots and stem leaf like that uh, my dear friends uh, join immediately and at the same time listen carefully during this class if you have any doubts uh, regarding of this class uh, please ask our respected madam okay madam uh, please uh, start your session and share your screen thank you sir thank you very much please wait sir so today onwards i am going to start uh, uh, the overview of vascular plant organ uh, mainly these are three types root stem and leaf today i am going to discuss about the root so the plant organs are made uh, from simple and complex tissues that adapts as a group to perform particular functions that uh, plants have three types of organs root stem and leaves um, that uh, bryophytes and some seedless vascular plants have structures that can be called stem like leaf like and root like but are not considered true root stems and leaf in the bryophytes we are observed that uh, what is the roots root is a main important uh, plant part in, part in the plant root has two main functions that is anchoring the plant in the soil absorption of water and minerals absorption takes place near the tips of root through trichomes called root hairs many roots store food for the plant example carrot and sweet potatoes the uh, plants and other multicellular organisms develop from a single cell only through these cell divisions elongation and uh, specializing for different functions seed plants are either gymnosperms or angiosperms see here uh, in the gymnosperms are plants with naked seeds angiosperms are plants with uh, seeds in a container the body of a typical plant can be described as having two connecting systems that is root system and shoot system in the plant embryology uh, that uh, embryogenesis that is the process that produces a plant embryo from a fertilized ovule by the cell divisions and the differentiation of under differentiated undifferentiated cells into tissues and organs uh, in this a seed plant embryo includes the following embryonic organs that develops into a root and shoots see here uh, what are the uh, parts uh, that is cotyledon Uh, radical plumule epicotyl and uh, hypocotyl these are the main important uh, uh, things so what is a cotyledon see here uh, this is a seed leaf it is usually the largest and most visible part of an embryo so whenever uh, uh, we seed that uh, uh, in the soil so that embryo uh, in the part of embryo that uh, largest and most visible parts uh the uh, leaves so consists of one or more seed leaves main function is the stores food for the germinating seed whenever that uh, the seed germination is going on that uh, uh, food is uh, stored and uh, it is useful for the germinating seed that is the cotyledon and uh, see here next uh, what is a radical what is a plumule so embryonic root is a radical the part of a plant embryo that develops into the primary root that is a radical it's very very important and uh, what is the plumule embryonic shoot embryonic root is a radical embryonic shoot is a plumule the rudimentary shoot of an embryo plant that is a plumule and uh, what is the epicotyl this is the embryonic stem the tiny shoot which develops into stems leaves and flowers of the plant future see here uh, in this diagram uh, shows that uh, what is a epicotyl cotyledon and hypocotyl 
so the hypocotyledon the stem of a germinating seedling found below the cotyledons and above the radicle see here what is the radicle so i already explained what is the radical embryonic root see here in this also the uh, radical is there so in the third uh, diagram shows that uh, what is the radical that uh, grows down that is a radical see here epicotyl and a plumule is there or uh, true leaves emerge okay so this is the germination time we are observed these uh, radical plumule epicotyl and uh, hypocotyl okay so next we are coming to the uh root anatomy so see here already you know what is the annual plants biennial plants and uh, perennial plants uh so the body of a typical plant can be described as having two connecting system that uh, root system and uh, shoot system so today we are going to root what is the root so in vascular plants the root is the organ of a plant that typically lies below the surface of the soil that is the root roots can also be aerial or aerating that is growing up above the ground or specially above water so uh, the first root that comes from a plant uh, it is called radical okay first root comes from the radical this is important what is that radical and uh, functions of root uh, already i discussed that anchoring of plant firmly in the soil and absorption and conduction of water and inorganic nutrients storage of food and nutrients vegetative reproduction root produce hormones also and other substances that regulated the plant's development and uh, structure so that uh, uh, root comes is the underground part of the plant axis the root constitutes the underground part of the plant axis it develops normally from the radical from the embryo uh, but may sometimes develop uh, from any other part of the plant body sometimes we are observed that uh, uh, the root uh, it may develop from any other parts of the plant body also the the uh, root system is uh, two types that is a tap root system and a fibrous root system are the most common in the seed plants they are concerned with anchorage and absorption and storage and condition these are the main uh, functions of the root in some plants we, are, we observe that the entire root or part of the pod becomes modified to specialized function okay the fleshy roots of uh, sweet potato beetroot and radish we are observed that there, there is a uh, storage the uh, food material okay the, the specialized uh, uh, roots as a storage organ they are called storage organs a fleshy root is often associated with an equally fleshy hypocotyl and lower part of radical and may have an anomalous form form of secondary growth okay uh, some plants we are observed that there is a special thing uh, in the root system see here there is a types of uh, root system is two types there is tap root system and adventitious uh, root system so, uh, that and sometimes uh, in the mangroves have in the mangroves we have observed that the roots are very large aerial uh, prop roots are there in the mangroves and also aerating roots uh, that we are called uh, pneumatophores okay this is important in the competitive exam uh, so that uh, we are called in the mangroves that uh, uh, pneumatophores okay that grow upward and help in the respiration roots uh, aerating roots uh, grow upward and uh, help in the respiration that uh, that type of uh, roots are called uh, pneumatophores we are observed in the mangroves some uh, vines and epiphytes uh, develop aerial roots that attach the shoots uh, to the surface upon uh, which the plant is growing uh, in the in uh, some parasitic plants also develop the hostoria also okay parasitic plants uh, develop the hostoria which establish a connection along which uh, nutrients pass from the host to the parasite okay that is a one type of uh, special uh, uh, thing in the uh, we are uh, observed in the parasitic plant and in the fungi uh, some uh, mycorrhizal associations are there uh, of root of uh, root and uh, fungi okay root and fungi that uh, that association we are called mycorrhizal association uh usually interpreted as a, that is we are called a symbiotic association okay so these we are observed uh, so next we are coming to the root anatomy so what is the tap root system and what is the 
uh, adventitious system system is uh, already you know that uh, see here that uh, tap root system are typically of most dicots and gymnosperms example uh, beans uh, cycads conifers and dandelions so these are the examples of uh, tap root system and uh, adventitious root system so we can observe in the coconut palm gramine family we are observed that uh, adventitious uh, root system is there uh, that uh, this is a common in seedless vascular plants and uh, grasses also okay these roots can be present underground or above the ground okay next we are coming to the anatomy so see here so root development occurs near the root tip in the apical meristem apical meristem has cells uh, called initials so what is that initial initials are located within a small pericle center of the meristem is called a quiescent center quiescent center initials and derivative cells can uh, rebuild damaged or destroyed apical meristem so root cap is also there uh, that uh, a root apical meristem produces the root cap which consists of several layers of cells several layers of cells are formed as a root cap the root cap serves as a protection for the root cells as it pushes between the soil particles the root cap uh, produces a slimy polysaccharide known as mucigel or uh, that uh, this uh, mucigel uh, lubricates the passage of the root through the soil okay see here this is uh, the root apical meristem okay so how to develop the root development is going on uh, producing the derivatives that uh, becomes primary meristem so protoderm ground meristem and uh, procambium in the root uh, division growth and differentiation of cells can be traced in linearly through the three overlapping regions that uh, divisions are uh, cell division and elongation and maturation okay so next we are coming to the anatomy of the root uh, this is very very important the internal organization of the root is uh, simpler than that of a stem okay a transfer section of the root shows a clear differentiation of the three tissue system uh, that is epidermal ground and uh, vascular tissue systems the roots can be differentiated from the stem on the base of the uh, following characters that is uh, maybe seen okay so what are the differentiation between uh, the roots and stem roots and uh, stem so some uh, some character uh, characteristics are uh, differentiated from the root and the stem so what are the uh, characteristics uh, uh, somata and cuticle are absent in the epidermis okay so there is a first thing unicellular root hairs arise from the epidermis and the cortex is well developed and is with uh, parenchyma cell endodermis is distinct with the casparian thickening so pericycle is usually one layered and the parenchyma is lateral uh, roots arise from the pericycle and hence endogenous in origin vascular bundles are separate and radial xylem is always exact in nature so these are the characters uh, very special to the only root uh, okay somata and uh, cuticle are absent in the epidermis of a root so unicellular root hairs are arisen from the epidermis cortex is well developed uh, these characters will be shown in the will be seen in the uh, root anatomy so next uh, see here this is the internal structures uh, of a root uh anatomy of uh, first uh, young uh, dicot root so this uh, young dicot root shows the uh, that uh, anatomical characters are epidermis cortex and uh, seal okay so first uh, what is the epidermis okay epidermis it is the outermost layer see here in this uh, diagram you observe that uh, parts of uh, root epidermis it is the outermost layer and is derived from the dermatogen or the protoderm of the root apical meristem it is derived from the dermatogen or the protoderm of the root apical meristem it is made up of thin walled living cells thin walled living cells that are compactly arranged okay so when uh, in the transverse section we observe that uh, these cells appear rectangular or some isodiametric and oval in shape these uh, the epidermis usually lack the stomata and the cuticle okay so remember this so what is that the cuticle and the stomata are absent okay 
in some herbaceous perennials where the epidermis is long lived and acts as chief protective tissue the walls of epidermal cells are cutinized okay in some herbaceous uh, uh, perennials we are observed that the breaking roots in the halophytes possess specialized pores in the epidermis only we are observed that halophytes halophytes means what the plants growing in the salt water that is they are called halophytes so in the halophytes we are observed that uh, some specialized uh, uh, pores in the epidermis these are called the lenticels okay lenticels remember this this is also one of the important uh, thing and uh, the root epidermis is usually uniseriate uh, most of the epidermal cells extend out in the form of uh, tubular unicellular root hairs the cells of the epidermis which form root hairs are called uh, trichoblasts okay the cells of the epidermis which form the root hair that is called a trichoblast these cells are usually smaller in size the epidermis is also known as piliferous layer or epiblema that is called a piliferous layer or epiblema normally the root uh, uh, the root hairs are confined to a region between 1 to several uh, uh, centimeters in length near the tip that region is uh, called is known as root hair zone okay that root hair zone so the main functions of the epidermis are protection and absorption of water and uh, solute okay this is the epidermis and uh, cortex next we are coming to the second part that is the cortex epidermis cortex second one is the cortex see here the cortex is massive and consists of several layers of uh, thin walled parenchyma cell okay the cells contain uh, leucoplasts and abundant starch grains in them in that uh, cortex we are observed that some parenchyma cells in the we are observed that leucoplasts and starch grains also present in the cortex sometimes as the epiblema degenerate the outer layers of the cortex become thick walled and function as exodermis okay sometimes sometimes we are observed that that epiblema uh, degenerate uh, that epidermis is degenerated the time that outer layers of the cortex become thick walled and uh, function as exodermis okay so next uh, the cortical cells are generally uh, oval or rounded in shape uh, but they appear polygonal due to mutual pressure see here in the uh, brown color cells are there in the cortex see here that is a parenchyma cell these cells are arranged in radial rows so they may alternate with one another in successive concentric layers uh, schizogenous intercellular spaces are present in the water plants the intercellular spaces are large and uh, form air cavities so in the in the hydrophytes we are observed that uh, the spaces are very larger in size and forms the air cavities okay uh, that is next the chloroplasts are generally absent uh, but in the roots of uh, some water plants and aerial roots of many epiphytes example of epiphyte uh, tenospora the chloroplasts are present in the cortical cell okay tannin cells and uh, mucilage cells have also been reported in the cortex of many roots Uh, in the halophytes, the uh, stone cells or clearates of various shapes are present in the cortex. Uh, it's very very important. Uh, in the cortex cells, uh, we are observed that uh, some various shapes of uh, clearates are there. Uh, stone cells or uh, clearates are present in the only we are observed in the halophytes only. Okay. The cortical cells in the roots of uh, some dicotyledons, example Brassica, Pyrus, uh, Prunus, and uh, uh, Speria. may develop prominent reticulate or band like thickenings outside the endodermis okay the cortex uh, functions are uh, mainly it main aerating tissue that helps in the gaseous exchange and uh, the cortex cells uh, store the food material also in the form of uh, starch grains and lipids uh, in the uh, root hair zone the cortical cells help in the passage of absorbed water and solutes uh, from the epidermal cells to the xylem it is known as lateral conduction okay that is a function of uh, cortex okay so next uh, we are coming to the endodermis see here endodermis this is a innermost distinct layer of the cortex uh, that is called endodermis it uh, consists of a single layer see here it is uh, in a light orange color is there that is the endodermis uh, 
it consists of a single layer of compactly arranged uh, barrel shaped cells uh, the cells are living and uh, characterized by the presence of uh, casparian strips it's very important um, in their radial and transverse walls thin walled passive cells are also present in the endodermis just above the protoxylem elements they allow the passage of uh, water from cortex to xylem the endodermis behaves like a water tight jacket around the steel the endodermis is generally destroyed after the second growth so endodermis is a single layer cell uh, that uh, compactly arranged a barrel shaped cell and i have the casparian strips okay there is a endodermis uh, generally that uh, uh, endodermis destroyed after the secondary growth that uh, pericycle the layer next to the endodermis is known as pericycle it is in the pink color is there that single layered uh, pericycle is uh, present that uh, pericycle it consists the outer boundary of the primary vascular cylinder of the dicot roots the pericycle may be uniseriate or uh, multiseriate but in this diagram only that uh, single uh, uniseriate only example morus salix uh, aerial roots of uh, ficus bengalensis uh, these are the example for the it is generally composed of thin walled cells uh, in the salix the multi layered pericycle is made up of thick walled cells salix we are observed in the salix that multi layered pericycle is there uh, lateral roots arise in the tissue the lateral roots arise in this tissue from the pericycle the phloxen and uh, part of vascular cambium originate in the pericycle there is a pericycle so next uh, uh, come to the vascular tissues uh, in the center the vascular bundles are alternate and uh, radial the xylem and phloem form separate alternating bundles so the uh, the number of uh, xylem and phloem strands are uh, very uh, from 2 to 8 in dicot roots according to their number uh, the uh, roots are designated as uh, diarch triarch tetrarch and polyarch okay only one xylem strand occurs in the center root of the hydrophyte uh, trapa matter trapa is a example for the only single xylem strand occurs okay so that is a in linum and dacus uh, ly lycopasticum and nicotiana the roots are diarch so monarch means only single strand is there that is example of that uh, trapa and uh, in the diarch examples are dacus and linum in pcm the roots are triarch pcm and uh, next in the sizer and uh, vixia and uh, gasipium and uh, ranunculus the roots are tetrarch okay in the some dicots the roots of the same plant may show uh, di tri and tetrarch xylems also such roots are called uh, heteriarch uh, roots heteriarch roots example nymphia and uh, eryngium enhydra so that are uh, examples for the heteriarch uh, roots the protoxylem elements lie next to the pericycle and uh, smaller in size they are in smaller in size they have spiral annual uh, annular and uh, reticulate thickening the metaxylem elements are wider and uh, spread towards the center the protoxylem means uh, uh, firstly formed uh, cells are called protoxylem and metaxylem is uh, after the maturation that uh, cells are called metaxylem these are elements are wider and uh, present towards the center their walls generally possess uh, border pits also the uh, centripetal sequence of uh, maturation of xylem in the roots is called exarch okay that is a uh, exarch if the metaxylem occupies the center of the roots the pit is absent the vessels generally appear as a polygonal in the cross section the phloem consists of sieve tubes companion cells and uh, phloem parenchyma the development of phloem is also centripetal the compression cells in the dicot roots are present in the metaphloem and are usually absent in the protophloem so these are the vascular bundles in the xylem in the phloem we are observed that uh, element the parenchyma cells uh, between the xylem and phloem form a tissue that is called a complementary tissue or conjunctive tissue okay that uh, the central region of the root is occupied by a narrow parenchymatous pit or uh, medulla sometimes it is absent okay so in this diagram that uh, medulla or uh, pit is uh, absent okay in uh, some plants we are observed that that uh, some narrow parenchymatous pit is there 
so the xylem bundles vary in number from 2 to 6 they may be diarch triarch or tetrarch or pentarch or exarch peri cycle gives rise to lateral roots please uh, remember this is very very important what is that peri cycle gives rise to lateral roots and the secondary cambium this is a very very important uh, competitive exams uh, we may guess okay the peri cycle gives rise to lateral roots and uh, secondary cambium the pith is scantly or altogether absent scanty or altogether absent that is the uh, we are observed in the dicot root uh, anatomy so next whenever we are coming to the anatomy of monocot root uh, same uh, so differentiation into same epidermis cortex and the seals uh, we are observed that uh, three parts okay but uh, in the um, monocot root we are observed that uh, the velamen acts as a protective layer that is a very important in the epidermis it is usually uniserial but many orchids so in the some orchids we are observed that epiphytic uh, aerides the uh, epidermis becomes a multiserial so that uh, we are commonly that is known as uh, velamen it comes of compactly arranged non living cells with thick end walls that is called velamen the cells of velamen are uh, quite big in size and uh, contain air and water in them that type of cells we are called uh, velamen very very important uh, the cell wall uh, develops fibrous thickenings also that is the uh, velamen acts as a protective layer and reduces the loss of water from the cortex okay in the monocot root uh, we are observed that uh, velamen it's very very important it uh, protective layer and uh, reduces the loss of water from the cortex okay remember that and the cortex is the same next um, and after that endodermis pericycle and vascular tissues uh, same what is the differences between dicot and monocot roots so mainly uh, see here in the xylem bundle the number uh, Two to six uh, xylem bundles are present in the dicot root. Number of bundles more than six uh, are observed in the monocot root. Okay, please uh, note these uh, important points. Peri cycle it uh, gives rise to lateral roots and cambium in the dicot root. Uh, but uh, in the monocot root, we are observed that gives rise to lateral roots only. Okay, so these are the main uh, differentiates and the meta xylem. Usually polygonal in shape in the dicot root, but in the oval or spherical in shape in the monocot root. Metaxylem. Okay. Conjunctive tissue usually parenchyma is in the dicot root, uh, but in the usually parenchyma is, uh, but in the maze it is clearenchyma is. This is a very very important. Uh, what is that? In the maze we are observed that the conjunctive tissue is in clearenchyma is. The cells are made with the clearing chemata cells and the dicot root is usually parent chemata only fit uh, small or completely absent in the dicot root but a large and well developed in the monocot root please uh, observe these uh, differences of um, dicot root and uh, monocot root okay this is a root anatomy okay next uh, we are coming to the Uh, in the already we are discussed that in the root uh, the rhizophora and avicennia these are the uh, mangroves the pneumatophores uh, pneumatophores are uh, we are called that uh, respiratory roots or breathing roots or pneumatophores is very very important uh. Rhizophora and Abyssinia uh, examples for the pneumatophores or respiratory roots or breathing roots. Okay, so remember this uh, is very very important. And uh, uh, in the some plants, uh, reproductive roots also there. Uh, sometimes uh, the root produces adventitious buds which helps in the propagation. As many species of agave, cedium, murraya, and uh, millingotia. Okay, these roots are called uh, reproductive roots. Reproductive roots examples are the agave, cedium, murraya, and uh, millingotia. Okay, 
uh, vegetative propagation through the root cuttings is common in the ipomia batatas and uh, uh, trichosantes uh, these are the examples of uh, vegetative propagation and uh, sometimes we are observed that uh, certain noxious weeds uh, these also spread uh, through the buds only developing the on roots these buds frequently arise endogenously like lateral or adventitious roots okay there is a reproductive uh, roots we are observed that next uh, mycorrhizal roots uh, its association of uh, fungal roots uh, fungi and roots uh, symbiotic uh, association of uh, uh, brachyrhizae short end roots and the fungi is uh, termed as mycorrhizae when the root is uh, covered extremely by a fungal mantle it is termed uh, ectotrophic mycorrhiza is contrast to the ones uh, where the fungus is located in the cortex the ectotrophic mycorrhiza is normally characterized by the absence of root hairs that are distinct uh, fungal, uh, fungal mantle and uh, repeated uh, dichotomous branching okay this is a uh, mycorrhizal uh, roots and uh, uh, sometimes we are observed that root nodules uh, the plant okay these root nodules are also uh, very very important uh, this association leads to the development of uh, swelling on roots okay some uh, swellings are coming uh, from the root uh, that is called root nodules uh, the phenomena is a phenomenon characteristic of fabaceae okay so in the fabaceae we are observed that root nodules is very very important the bacteria invade the root and uh, chiefly through the root hairs Uh, while multiplying uh, the bacteria from infection form the uh, bacteria form infection threads by becoming enclosed in a sheet of uh, gum like material okay so that uh, the infection threads uh, penetrate deeply into the root cortex uh, inducing a proliferation of inner cortical cells uh, that is a proliferation becomes a nodule okay that becomes a nodule nodule means it's a swelling the differentiated cells of the inner region Herbarous the bacteria and is called a bacterioid zone. The nodule at this stage uh, resembles uh, superficially a primordium of a lateral root. So that uh, the root epidermis breaks into the nodule, emerges from the cortex. The cells of the root cortex divide and stretch uh, considerably so that they remain at the outermost layer of the node. And this is the uh, root nodule. Uh, I think. Uh, it's uh, very clearly i explained about the root okay different types of roots uh, tap roots and adventitious roots and uh, see here uh protostyl protostyl so what is the steel the central part of the root or uh, stem is called a steel okay we have xylem and phloem is the vascular bundles or vascular tissues See here the root development. So in the figure we are observed the three types of uh, development. So there are apical meristem region of cell division. Cell division part is there under the region of elongation and the region of maturation. Okay. So this like root development is going on uh, from these uh, three differential uh, zones. Okay. So this is a uh, in the second diagram we observe that uh, root cap is there. Apical meristem region of uh, cell division and the same prokaryotic ground meristem protoderm. Okay, these are the three terms. And uh, see here, protoderm, ground meristem, and the prokaryotic. So this is uh, how the uh, development is going on in the root. Uh, that will be shown clearly in these uh, diagrams. Okay. So see here, protostyle means uh, the most simplest type of steel. Means what? Only that uh, xylem uh, around the phloem. That is uh, that uh, the type of steel is called a protostyle. Pericycle is very very important. Uh, that uh, forming the lateral roots it gives rise to lateral roots. It's very very important. Secondary cambium in the dicot root. That is the pericycle. Endodermis is the the layer of cells around the steel that regulates the flow of substances between the cortex and the vascular tissue. That is the endodermis. We have in the posterior strips also. Okay. 
so see here some modified roots uh, aerial roots so found in the plants we are observed that on other plants for support and nourishment that is called epiphyte okay so provides additional support for a plant such as water retention photosynthesis and support example corn okay this is a aerial root and uh, buttress roots also we are observed as some plants that are fig tree Flare roots that extend from the tree trunks to provide stability to plants in thin soil. Thin soil से कड़े टेम उठाए और कड़ा provide जे बढ़ते हैं. So these uh, flare roots, okay? These uh, these type of roots we are called buttress roots. And uh, contractile roots. So a thick and specialized root at the base of the comb, bulb, and the rosette or other organ. These roots are usually broad, fleshy, vertical, tapering, wrinkled looking. Okay? So in the lotus, it is designed to shrink vertically, and um, lilies also under conditions of seasonal drought and helps uh, position this plant pot at an appropriate level in the ground. Okay, so contractile roots uh, found in lilies, different types of lilies, and in metaphors, I already discussed what is that? Uh, this is uh, also known as air roots. Okay, in the mangroves, uh, we are observed rhizophora and abyssinia are example for this. they provide oxygen for the plants in swampy areas where high rate of aerobic decay reduce the oxygen supply in the water okay this is these are the nematophores there is a breathing root okay the hostoria in some time in sometimes we are observing the parasitic root the modified parasitic root they penetrate the stems and roots of other plants to obtain water mineral and organic molecules example mistletoe okay this came all about hostoria See here that the uh, roots uh, uh, relationship with other already uh, we 